Daniel. We are strange machines. We are people crowding the streets. I have been in New York for four weeks now and my limbs have become familiar with New York skin. The armpits of lean or leaning women, a whiff of cologne from the subway rumble. Everyone here must come up against everyone else. We are each compact and easily contained. But even worse than beginning a letter with an apology is perhaps this, beginning a letter with a complaint. I don't mean to sound unhappy. I've not been unhappy here. I've not been unhappy only. Earlier last month, I walked Fulton Mall until the shops dissolved into the projects, into brick and scrub. It was a few days after a flash flood in Brooklyn and the rain had stayed loitering above us, one stretched patina. At the end of Fulton Mall, the last Chinese restaurant in the world stood on guard as young brothers squared off on the sidewalk, ducked behind boxing gloves, yipping like dogs. Whenever the rain stopped, street people relit cigarettes. One woman tested the air like begging for change, and I waited for my takeout. The problem is this, my dear poet. You and I occur in the in-betweens, but New York occurs in rooms. I'm referring, of course, to the machinery of this great tragic comedy of a city. The meeting rooms, the bars, the, the study rooms and line-tipped libraries, bathrooms, rooms beneath the earth where trains shoot about like viruses, corner convenience rooms, bodegas, gated parks, gated schoolrooms, courtrooms. I wander the streets in a daze, in a permanent waiting to begin. New York exists only when four walls agree to seal it, to set it apart from the wind. This is why I'm so interested in your or Spinoza's image of God, the thought that thinks itself, you write. There is nothing to transcend, which means that, unlike a city, God need not be walled to exist. I'm envious of this. I'm envious of him or it, this thought, this infinity that cannot help but be the entirety of itself. Indifferent even to the names he is given, or the love he receives or doesn't, he knows only to be complete. I'm envious of this, of this completeness. Would you believe it? The men here have renamed me Lady. On the trains, their eyes stalk up the slope of my shoulders to end at the base of my neck and descend. The other night, one even touched my wrist in the rubber, piss poor dark. I've never been so looked at. Daniel, is this what my girlhood wished for? How could it be? I'm terrified not of their hands, but of my believing them completely. I become someone else when I walk these streets. In this city, I will never be complete. But I digress. I should thank you for your praise. As always, you are much too kind to me about my poetry. So kind, in fact, that I sometimes wonder if you're really talking about someone else, about this dear little poet you keep writing to who sometimes shows up in my head for an hour or so, and even then, only to write, which is in so many ways the opposite of living. I wanted to ask you, do you think it's possible for people to become rooms? By which I mean, for this distance I feel in the streets between each walker. For each and each as we walk by, brushing shoulders, touching bags, to be inhabiting a different space. And then, for each of us, 
as we look out from our respective solitudes at the welter of faces to rename them as we see fit, to rename them Lady and, and have that contain them somehow, or at least preserve this space. But Daniel, this is not what I need. Since I've been here, all I've wanted is to stop passing by and start being with. To reach out with that rare or stupid brand of hope that insists on maybe touching another life. Even as the stranger sews herself back into the TikTok crowd and I rise, alone but awake. I thought about how far I would have to take a plane to get to you across an ocean teeming with contradictions and further inland across your island just to sit with someone willing to be with. But I would have to leap the fear with all that mileage or, or jettison it from the wire. Daniel. This is about distance. We are 10,000 miles away, but it is not just space. We are 10,000 miles away, but it is a rift made too of hours and ideas. As I stand here in Chelsea, for instance, where everyone else I can see and touch also resides, we are dwarfed by the same warm, wet night and corralled by the same rugelach sidewalks outside and here. In this theater, we listen to the same voice praying, praying among the black rafters, the railings, this prison of lights, dear God of Spinoza, dear thought that thinks itself so that it might be heard on the other side of this chapped and rollicking ocean where Daniel, you dip your toes in another unimaginable morning, drinking who knows what from a student mug, or with such an expression on your face, such a prodigious, preposterous thought that you rise from what chair and what room with such force that entire buildings topple in your memory and the cat scatters itself across the floor. How far will we go to imagine each other, just to get a little bit closer? Dear God of Spinoza, bearer of great distances, give me a word that will carry me over, a phrase big enough to hold all that I mean. Daniel, I'm afraid to meet you. I'm afraid that you love me for what I do and not who I am. I'm afraid that I love you not as a person, but as a handful of words and letters. But even more than that, I'm afraid of never meeting, of never being able to be in the same room. If I could, I'd sit at a table with you on a night not different from this one, and hear each word as it comes from a mouth I've only known from photographs. And for once, to improvise on that, on the click of your wrist or the curve of your yawn, and be surprised by the way the sunlight streams across your face and moves with the day. I want to be surprised by you. Can we let what we know of each other empty, just like this. Can we begin? Daniel, I want to come to the end of all that is possible with words. To be enabled to say what you are, and to hear you hesitate to call me poet. So as to be known as a smell or a gesture, or a vector of light in a box of mirrors. And isn't that what we all want after all? To be loved where we cannot help? And to sit together, really sit together in the same room and feel like God must feel sometimes. And then, to hear the distant coin-click sound of another door opening so as to turn and meet it. So as to turn and meet it there. And see what?
yes, pray. My dear, so many times, my dear, more than this is, is nothing. To the high silences, unhailed, that surge around us, always wearing us away. It is easily said, you lie somewhere there, elegant, under unrehearsed possibilities of language, turning and turning with the slow drift of the stellar storm. And this becomes almost a place where those two we loved as once stand on either side of language to watch. And so, even that is something, if nothing more than making from the behaviour of silence. Maybe a slow gathering way at night over the unhailed water. 